Hello, my name is Obsidiman, and this is my comprehensive Interstellar Rift tutorial. In this series, we're going over everything Interstellar Rift has to offer, from just the basics to the most advanced mechanics and beyond. In this video, we're taking a look at how to mine and refine your own resources. To go over mining and refining, we'll use the Hurls Co. Industrial Complex, the station you start out if you choose Hurls Co. at the beginning of your game. This station has everything we need to learn how mining works. In Interstellar Rift, you mine resources by using this device, called the Extractor. It can teleport nearby asteroids full of ore into the large glass box, where it will be stripped down automatically, sorted into crates of ore, and placed on the attached cargo pad. Head up the small set of stairs to the raised platform, where you'll find the controls for the extractor. The screen on the left shows all asteroids within range of your ship, including which and how much of each resource they have. Left-click on an asteroid you want to mine, and the screen on the right will display more detailed information about the asteroid, like the names of the resources and how far away from your ship the asteroid currently is. Press the Mine button to confirm the asteroid and begin mining it. The extractor teleports the asteroid into the glass chamber. The crates will come out of the slot near the bottom and the gantry crane will automatically place the crates on the cargo pad, ready to be collected. If the output cargo pad is full, the extractor will pause and wait until there's room to continue outputting resources. By double left-clicking asteroids from the list, you can quickly select them for mining. While one asteroid is being mined, you can add others to a queue by double-clicking them from the list. Queued asteroids will be displayed in dark blue. Let's take a look at all these resources we've been gathering. After mining from the asteroids, we're given resources in their raw form, denoted with this symbol. All the ores in the game, including the iron and copper we've mined here, use this symbol. Water also shares the same symbol, but unlike ores, it has another use all on its own, which we'll look at in a later video. Of the resources we've mined here, carbon is unique in the fact that it doesn't need to be processed. As it is now, the carbon is ready to be used in a number of crafting recipes. Resources in Interstellar Rift are grouped into four tiers. Tier 0, which includes everything we've collected here, is the basic tier. Tier 1 has resources like silicon and brass. Tier 2 includes aluminum and a special resource called vectronium. And finally, Tier 3, which most notably includes the highly sought-after crystal vectronium. Higher tier resources are needed to make more advanced ships and items. In order to find resources from higher tiers, you have to travel to a star system of a corresponding tier. We'll get into the specifics of finding systems with higher tier resources when we look at star systems and rifting in a later video. Now that we've collected a good amount of ore, let's refine it into some usable resources. To do that, we need to use the refinery. On the industrial complex, we have access to the large refinery, but if you're short on space in your ship, there's also a small variant. The small refinery is far smaller and cheaper to make, but doesn't process resources quite as fast as the large one. To use the refinery, take the ore you'd like to process and place it in the box slot on the left side of the machine. You can insert up to 8 crates in here before it fills up. Once you've got everything loaded into the machine, go over to the console in the center with the three screens. On the leftmost screen, you can see all the crates you just inserted. If you left-click on one of the resources, you can see a list of all the recipes it can be used for in the refinery. We can see that iron ore is used for making refined iron metal. You can also eject crates from this screen by left-clicking the small eject icon in the top right of each resource. Useful if you accidentally put something in that you don't want to process. On the central screen, we can see a list of all the resources we can currently make in the refinery. Since we filled it up with iron ore, we can see that the only recipe we can make right now is refined iron. If you select the resource, you can change how much of it you'd like to produce, or press the max button to set it to the maximum currently possible. By default, it will try to produce the maximum, which is what we want, so for now, we'll leave this setting as is. Once you've chosen what you want to make, and how much of it, press process to start refining. The rightmost screen will now show a progress bar, and a ready amount. The progress bar shows how far along in each batch the refinery is, and once it fills up, that batch will be added to the ready amount. Once the ready amount reaches a filled crate's worth of that resource, 600 units in the case of iron, it will send the finished crate out and along the conveyor belt on the right side of the machine. Only four crates can fit on the conveyor at once, plus one additional crate in the ready buffer, for a total of five crates that can be made before the machine backs up and the conveyor needs to be emptied. Let's cover some of the basic recipes that everyone should know when starting out. 
We've already seen the iron ore to iron recipe. One unit of iron ore makes one unit of iron. Similarly, one unit of copper ore will make one unit of copper. If you combine two refined iron units with one unit of carbon, you can make one unit of steel. Water has a number of uses in the refinery. One unit of water can be turned into a unit of hydrogen, the most basic type of fuel for ships, or into one unit of oxygen, which is used in life support systems. A single unit of deuterium can be made by processing 1,000 units of water. Deuterium is most notably used in heat sinks and xanthium, which is used to create interstellar rifts. If you combine one unit of water and one unit of hydrogen, you get two units of coolant, which is used to cool down ships when they get too hot. Put your coolant back in the refinery and you can turn it into heated coolant, which warms up ships that are too cold. We'll be using hydrogen, oxygen, coolant, and heated coolant in the next episode. If you ever need a reminder for any of these recipes, press tab to open your grip and left click the encyclopedia button in the top left. From here you can find a short description and the recipe for every resource, item, and prop in the game. You can either look through the list on the right, or use the search bar at the top right corner to find something quickly. The recipe for any given item will show what and how much it takes as an input, which machine is needed to make it, and how much the recipe yields. That's all we have for this episode of the series. In the next video, we'll take our resources and use them to get a ship flight ready. If there are any topics you'd like to see covered in a future video, leave your suggestion in a comment below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to catch the rest of the series.